Hi, my name is Steve Hallfish. I'm the author of The Art and Technique of Digital Color Correction and the recently released Avid book, Avid Uncut. Avid has long been the overwhelming NLA of choice for major feature films and primetime scripted TV shows. One of the many strengths of Avid is the method of applying color correction. In the last few years, color correction has come to be used directly by editors instead of separately by colorists. It's a process that can make the most obvious difference to your projects in the eyes of your clients. So it's a very good thing to know how to do. And it's critical that your NLE allows you to do it easily and to do it well. Most other NLEs either add color correction as an effect or in a completely separate process that requires leaving the NLE then round tripping back to the NLE. In Avid, color correction is a mode which allows you quick access to its features while keeping them out of the way while editing. It's really the best of both worlds. Generally, you want to do color correction in context of the shots around it. That means color correction should really be a process done near the end of the edit. But as we all know, when we think the final edit is done, there's always something else that gets tweaked. In systems that require round tripping, this takes a lot of time specialized workflows and rarely works properly or conveniently. In Avid though, you are a click of a button from updating the edit or the color correction. Now, in Avid, color correction can be done using the same input tools that you use for editing, like a mouse or a trackball or a tablet. But if you want to increase efficiency by a quantum leap and impress your clients with a cool looking interface, you can use something like this Avid MC Color User Interface, like I have here. I'll use a trackball today but when I need to do a lot of corrections as quickly as possible, I use the MC Color to keep me in the moment and tweak stuff in the most convenient manner. Let's show you how color correction works inside of Avid. With the sequence edited in Avid, there are two easy ways to start color correction. From the Windows pull-down menu, you can open a color correction workspace with all the tool layouts customized the way you like them, or you can use the color correction mode button, one of which is near the bottom left of the timeline under the smart tools. Both of these buttons are easily mappable to custom keyboard shortcuts. In color correction mode, there are three windows. At the top is the composer window. Same as in the editing mode, except there are three monitors instead of two. In the default mode, these show you the shot you're grading in the middle, the previous shot in the sequence to the left, and the next shot in the sequence to the right. You can make these monitors be anything you want, including a waveform monitor and a vector scope. There are also controls below each window for navigating the timeline. You can see a split between your correction and the original with the button to the left. You can jump from one correction to the previous or next correction with the next buttons. With no corrections made, these jump to the beginning and end of the sequence you can play just the current correction with the play button. And you can jump to the previous and next uncorrected shot with the next two buttons. And you can clear or undo or delete the correction with the final button. At the bottom is the timeline. It's the same timeline you're looking at in editing mode and navigating through the timeline in color correction mode is basically the same as in editing. An important tip is to make sure that you have the video track active that you want to color correct. Color correcting an empty filler layer above the track you want will actually apply that color correction to all the clips under that filler. So be warned, this can be used for good or for evil. In the middle is where the magic happens. These are the color grading tools. They are laid out in a simple tabbed configuration. The way these look depends on whether you have the symphony option or not, but we'll assume that you don't. The first tab is the HSL tab. In that are the Control tab and the Hue Offsets tab. The Controls tab includes some controls I like and some that are really there because they are familiar image controls, but they aren't my favorites. For most things, there are better controls for Hue than the Hue control. Saturation is a control I'd use at the end of your other corrections. Brightness and contrast for most purposes are not controls I use because of their lack of control. Instead, go to the Hue Offsets tab. Here I use Gain, Gamma, and Setup, or Black. Gain controls the highlights, Gamma controls the midrange, and Setup controls the black levels. Back to the HSL tab, Clip High and Clip Low are preset at legal levels and most of the time shouldn't be changed. The controls to the right side are for matching colors and for temporarily saving color grades. The two color chips at the top allow you to select a color, like a skin tone, from the current clip then in the next color chip, select a color from a reference and then match the two colors. The pull down menu below the chips provides some options for matching the color, either hue only, 
saturation only, luminance only, or all three combined. To execute the match, press the Match Color button. Below Match Color are eight buttons labeled C1 through C8. These are the color buckets. They are temporary storage locations for placing color grades that you may want to reapply later in the sequence. With a grade that you've created in the current monitor, just option click on a Mac or alt click on a PC to load that grade into the color bucket you choose. You can also load grades that have been stored in bins by dragging them from the bin to the color bucket you choose. Above these controls are five buttons. The first is an icon that looks like two sliders. This takes you into effects mode. The second is a rainbow colored rectangle. This is called the Create Color Correction Effects Template, but it's really the Save Grade button. You can drag this button to a bin to save the current grade. You can also drag it directly to any other clips in the timeline to apply it directly, similar to dragging an effect icon onto a segment. The next button calls up the color mode settings, just like accessing the settings from the setting or preference list. The next button allows you to set legal level parameters for your videos. This is kind of similar to the safe color warning in FCP. Basically, the default levels are a good start. Only change them if someone provides you with specific video restrictions for a specific broadcaster or file. When these warnings are switched from their default of ignore to the warn setting, you will see a series of colored bars in the top left corner of the current monitor. The first yellow column is your composite video level. If the yellow chip is at the bottom, then your composite video level is illegal on the low end of your video. In other words, the blacks are illegally low. If it's at the top, then your composite video levels are too high. In other words, your highlights are illegal. If the chip is in the middle, then the level is OK. The next column to the right is the luma level. The error codes on it are the same. A chip at the bottom indicates illegally low luma levels. A chip at the top indicates illegally high luminance levels. The next three columns are the red, green, and blue gamut levels. Indications in these columns work the same as for composite and luma. And the final button in that row allows you to make notes. Sometimes an editor will do a basic color correction, but will leave the fine details to the online editor. In this case, you could leave notes about what you did or problems to look out for. In the HSL tab, the next tab below the Controls tab is the Hue Offsets tab. This is the equivalent to FCP's three-way color corrector. The three color wheels allow you to control the hue and saturation of your shadows, midtones, and highlights. These are analogous to the three color balls on the manual interface you see many colorists use. To counteract an improper balance in an image, like something Miss White balanced too blue, move the center crosshairs in the opposite direction. Or to add, for example, some warmth in your midtones, move the center crosshairs on your midtones wheel towards red or yellow. Below them are numerical entries for those luma ranges, and also an eyedropper that allows you to sample a spot on your image. The eyedropper under the shadow circle allows you to click on a spot that should be black and do an auto black balance. The one under the mid circle allows you to click a spot that should be gray to set a gray balance, and the one under the highlight circle allows you to click on an area that should be white to set a white balance. To the right are gain, gamma, and setup controls. Below those are more controls for doing automatic corrections. The first icon allows you to set an overall auto balance, balancing your colors. The next allows you to set the levels of your blacks to their lowest legal level. And the next allows you to set auto contrast, lowering blacks to their lowest level and highlights to their highest legal level. And the final icon allows you to automatically set your highlights to their highest legal level. All of the controls to the right work the same as the ones that were in the Controls tab. The only difference is that when you match colors, you can choose to match just your shadows, midtones, and highlights instead of HSL. Finally, in the Curves tab, you have four graphs. These represent your color channels, red, green, and blue, and also your master for adjusting luma, gamma, and black levels. At the bottom of the master graph is black, and the top is white. For the color graphs, the level of black for each color is at the bottom, and the highest amount of that color is at the top. To best understand this, let's look at an RGB waveform monitor for a chip chart. The RGB waveform monitor shows the amount of red, green, and blue in the image, the trick to understanding and using the RGB parade is to understand a basic principle of color. A pure black image has equal amounts of red, green, and blue. Very little of any of them. A pure gray image also has equal amounts of red, green, and blue, about 50% of each. And a pure white image 
also has equal amounts of red, green, and blue, about 100% of each. The RGB waveform monitor is basically a graph showing the amounts of each color, R, G, and B, in the image. If an image is balanced, the three graphs will look about the same. If the image is unbalanced, like Miss White Balanced to Blue, then the blue channel will be the strongest. The curves for each color channel allow you to manipulate the shadows, the bottoms of the graph, the midtones, the middle of the graph, and the highlights, the top of the graph. The master allows you to affect all three channels equally. Moving the bottom of the red graph will directly manipulate the shadows or bottom of the red level of the RGB parade. Moving the top of the blue graph will directly manipulate the top of the blue level in the RGB parade. Manipulating the middle of the master will directly manipulate the middle ranges of all three color channels on the RGB parade. Experiment with this and you will see this is a very powerful way to do color correction. Below the graphs are reset buttons that can be used to toggle the correction in each graph on or off. If you want to reset a graph to a factory default, simply Alt-click if you're on a PC or Option-click on a Mac to reset that graph. There are also numerical entries under each graph. To the right of the graphs are a master saturation slider and sliders for master gain, master gamma, and master setup, or black. To the right of those controls are the same controls in the other two tabs. There are a few differences though. When matching colors, instead of matching HSL or shadows, midtones, and highlights, here you can match RGB master levels or you can do what Avid calls a natural match, which is usually the best option. And at the bottom of these buttons are three icons for doing automatic color corrections. The first allows you to remove color casts. Click the eyedropper and then click on something that should be white or black in your image. The next icon allows you to auto balance the entire image. And the third icon applies an auto contrast move, setting your blacks to their lowest legal level and your whites to their highest legal level. A few other quick tips about the color correction interface is that color grades can be saved in bins. Just drag the rainbow rectangle icon from the color correction interface to a bin. You can name these saved corrections in the bin if you want. You can also map the save correction icon to a keyboard command. Then when you're parked on a current correction, just tap the save correction button to save the correction to an active bin. You can also save sampled colors to a bin. Sample a color with either of the two color chips by clicking and dragging from the color chip to the spot on the image you want to save or sample. Then option drag on a Mac or alt drag on a PC the sampled color chip to the bin. The chip is automatically named with the HTML color name and the RGB values of the color, but you can rename this something descriptive like client approved skin tone. You can then drag these back from the bin to the right color chip to be able to match another color to it, like a skin tone from one scene can be automatically matched to the skin tone in another scene. Leaving color correction mode is simple. Switch to source record editing mode or to your source record editing workspace or any other workspace. To revise an edit or a color correction, just go back to the other mode. All of your corrections follow you instantly between modes with no need to round trip. You can play and view your corrections without having to render, though rendering before exporting or laying off the tape is a good idea. I hope this has given you a great feeling for the controls and the power of the color correction tools inside of Avid and the reason that the way Avid handles color correction is much easier and more efficient than other NLEs. For more on how to actually do color correction well, I have a bunch of good free tutorials on the web, including my appearance at the Editor's Lounge. Just Google my name and Editor's Lounge, or pick up one of my color correction books. Avid Media Composer is available from this video's sponsor, videoguys.com, in three new license forms. Avid announced at NAB that you may now buy a perpetual license, a subscription license, or a floating license. Call the Video Guys to find out which option is best for you, or go to videoguys.com for more information. Thanks for watching. Happy grading. Videoguys.com is your source for streaming media and live production equipment, storage, and video editing hardware and software. We have specialized in video editing and production for more than 25 years, and our technicians are available to answer your questions and help you find the best solution for your needs and budget.